Today I'm going to walk you through a very simple synthesizer example design. The internals of this design are pretty uninteresting. Instead, the focus of the demo will be on the mechanisms used to communicate between the design block and the test bench and how we connect those modules together. As an outline for the presentation, we're going to cover a basic introduction of the point-to-point -point interface classes. Any synthesizer user has access to all these design files and you can run it for yourself. You can even use this design as a template or a starting point for your own designs. I'll walk through the details of the design showing you the use of the point-to-point -point interfaces from the point of view of the design module, the test bench module, and how to connect it up in a netlist in the system connection module. Finally, I'll show you how to substitute out the P2P interface and turn it into a FIFO connection. First, let's take a quick look at the P2P classes themselves. These classes are what we call interface classes and they're written in System C. The point-to-point -point interface is part of the Synware interface library that includes a number of different kinds of interfaces including things like FIFOs and stream buffers and line buffers and point-to-point -point or P2P is certainly the most simple of those. Basically what these classes do in general is that they encapsulate protocol. The point-to-point -point class specifically is really a ready valid handshake. The goal of using the P2P classes is productivity both from a design and verification point of view. From the design point of view, you don't have to write it. You don't have to create the code in the first place. From the verification point of view, these classes have been used in thousands of designs already, and so basically you can consider them to be pre-verified. For each of these interface classes, there are three main components. There's the input port, the output port, and the channel that connects them, and you can consider that to be equivalent to what we would normally consider a wire in a traditional netlist. Here we are in the synthesizer workbench, and we're going to run the rest of the demo from here. First off, we're going to go and download the example from the examples and labs page. Go over to here, and we select the very first example on this page. This is the simple P2P. We click on that. It prompts us for a location to copy the design and we copy it down. What you'll get here is not only the project itself but actually a description of the project that will walk you through all of the meaningful parts of it and uh, describe the various different constructs. Here we see a picture of the system itself. Here we see the design under test. It takes an 8-bit value in and produces an 11-bit value out. The test bench consists of two concurrent threads, a source thread which creates values and sends them into the design under test and a sync thread which captures those values from the outputs and monitors them and stores them in a file. So we're just going to close that window and go over and look a little bit at our project. Here in this top section we see that we have a list of files and in the bottom section we have configurations for synthesis and simulation. Now what this allows us to define is a number of different synthesis configurations like BASIC and DPA this allows us to specify different directives and options to the tool and produce different hardware from the same source code. So let's start out by looking at some source code. We'll look at the header files for the design under test, the test bench, and our system, which is really our netlist. So we'd like to look at all those at the same time. So let's go over here and split this. We'll split the first one horizontal, and then do a side by side. Now I'm going to close this pane so we have a little more real estate. In this pane, we'll load the dut.h. In this pane, the testbench.h, and we have the system file at the bottom. Let's make that text a little larger, and we'll scroll it down. So here we can see the definitions in the various different files. Here in the design under test, we can see at the top of the module definition that we have our port definitions. We have a clock and a reset. And we see these two ports are called DIN and DOUT that are of type SYNWARE P2P. Now each of these takes a different data type, and one is defined as an IN and one is defined as an OUT. If we go and look at those data types, very, very simple. The data type IN is an SCU in 8, and a data type OUT is an SCU in 11. Now, one of the nice things about P2P classes is that this payload or data type that is transported across the channel can be basically 
pretty much anything that you could represent in hardware. In this case, we've selected very, very simple data types, but this could be as complex a structure as you like, including, for example, an entire packet or digital image. Let's go back to our original code. Now, over here in the test bench, we can see we have completely analogous ports. Um, we have the D in and the D out to the test bench, and as you can see, the data types are inverted for those, as you would expect. The input to the test bench is really the output from the design on a test, and so it's going to carry the DT2 data type. Now, down here in our system file, we define our channels. These are of type Sinware P2P, but you can see they have no specifiers. They have no direction. These channels correspond to wires in a traditional netlist. So let's go and see how we would hook all of that up by looking at the system.cc file. I'll get rid of our splits. And here we can see how we actually connect those channels to the ports of the design under test and the test bench. You can see that Chen 1, carrying data type DT1, which is really RSC UN8, is connected to the input port of the design under test and the output port of the test bench, and vice versa for channel 2. So hooking these up and connecting them like this is very, very trivial. So let's go take a look now at how we actually use these channels or these P2P classes in the design under test. We go to dut.cc and we can take a look at our thread that's defined here. At the top of the thread here we see the protocol section that is really the reset. This is always the first part of any thread in system C and in there we add resets for D in and D out. This will reset those channels to their idle state. The main execution loop is very, very straightforward. We see the first line where we simply call dn.get. That says get a value from the dn port, and this will stall or block if there is not a value present or not a value ready from the test bench. We calculate an output value based on some function, which is not really relevant to this discussion, and then we simply output that value through a call to dout.put. This will drive the value onto the output port, through the channel, and into the test bench. So as I mentioned before, all the protocol and stalling and blocking is all handled by the internals of the classes, and you don't have to worry about those. These ports can be used in pipeline loops with no problem at all. This relieves you from a lot of the work of building and verifying these kinds of interfaces and making sure that your data flows very, very smoothly. So let's look at another key value of using the Sinware interface classes. After building your design, you might decide that a simple input port won't suffice due to inequalities in the data generation rates between the driving module and your design and a test. So if you wanted to change this over to instead use a FIFO on the input rather than a simple P2P class, that is very, very easy with this kind of class. And let me show you how that's done. Let's go back to our system.h file. We'll also open up our system.cc file. First off, we're going to add a FIFO channel to our system. Let's go to the top here, and we'll add a new include. And that's called Sinware underscore FIFO, as you would expect. We go down and comment out channel 1. And we simply add It's going to be of type dt underscore 1 still. When let's say we will give it a depth of 5. And we'll call it channel 1. Now let's go down to the constructor. And since this particular class has storage, we need to identify a clock and a reset for it. So we'll do that through a very simple API call. Let's see, chan one dot clk reset and we provide the clock and the reset name. So that should do it for a header file. Now the only other thing that we need to change here is that the Sinware FIFO class has both an input side and an output side, and we need to ensure that we connect up the right side to the right module. So the DUT will be connected to the output of the FIFO, and the test bench will be connected to the input. 
And that's pretty much all the change we have to do. We don't need to modify either the test bench or the design itself in order to have the channel become something quite different. Let's go over and verify that we've got all that correct. We'll select our behavioral simulation. We will run that. And here we see the output from our simulation and it all worked okay. So now it's a new design that's been implemented with a FIFO interface instead of a direct point-to-point. -point. So this shows how easy it is to connect up design modules by encapsulating data flows into channels with the interface protocols built in. And those channels can include storage like a FIFO or a line buffer. You can easily change the type of the payload carried and it's easy to change the type of interface like switching from a simple ready valid interface to a FIFO and with changes in just a few lines of code, none of which were in the design modules themselves. That concludes our demo on using point-to-point -point interfaces in Synthesizer. Please review the other videos in this series to learn all the common tricks for getting up to speed as quickly as possible.